I'm joined by the comedian and political activist Kate Smirthwaite and the women's rights campaigner Kelly J. Keane. Kelly, does it undermine feminism to talk so much about mansplaining and manspreading as, as this new column in The Spectator today claimed? Well, I think it probably does because a lot of modern feminism doesn't really um, is not willing to say what a man is or a woman for that matter. So when we're, when we're on the basis when the very first bit of both of those insults starts with something that most women uh, of, or modern day feminists are too frightened to define, I think it's a bit of a lost cause, isn't it? Kate Smirthwaite. Um, well, I just like the twaddle you come up with, Dan, just never fails to amaze me. Like, first of all, the idea that terms like manspreading or mansplaining are somehow weaponized. Like, they're just little jokey terms that some women use to describe some behaviors that, that men do that might be, you know, they might not be deliberately, you know, belittling women or they might not be deliberately taking up more than one seat on the tube. But, you know, ultimately, um, they're just little jokey phrases that we use. And the idea that they close down any argument. I mean, you then showed some arguments which continued after the word had been used. So nobody's being closed down. It's just like, do you know what I mean? If if if, if you keep eating oaty biscuits, eventually you'll think of a short name for it and then it's called okay. a hobnob. I, I, think, you, I think you're being very <laughs> sexist, by the way, very sexist by claiming that it's me coming up with this twaddle. This is a brilliant new column by Ayan Hershey Ali, a, a great female writer in The Spectator. It's not me saying this, it's her. Right, OK, well, here's another thing, Dan. Like, you know, there are, there are millions, billions of women around the world and none of us have exactly the same opinions on any subject. And lots and lots of us are, of course, enthusiastic about improving, uh, you know, women's lot in life, in narrowing the pay gap, ending sexual yes. violence... All those kind of things. And there are lots and lots of different issues which women get. Yes, but the question is, Kate, the question is, is talking about mansplaining and manspreading undermining the important causes that you might be fighting for? That's the question. Like, if you think that women should only be allowed to talk about what the most important issue is, then, then sure, I'll jump in and talk about female refugees who are escaping rape and they need to be granted asylum immediately in the UK and the disgusting things I've just heard Nigel Farage say, and, and I don't think racist twaddle like that should be allowed on any station. If you're here to ask me about the term mansplaining, some people use it and some people think of it as a kind of feminist term. But feminism is not an organisation. We don't have an AGM. We don't all think the same thing it's the campaign for women's liberation and women's equality and as such well you seem to think a lot is twaddle today kate certainly yeah. nothing racist and so That's far you're the person. only one who's been sexist tonight uh, kelly j you want to respond yeah i'd just be interested to know when we talk about uh you know modern feminists where they've been because uh, mm. a lot of modern fe feminists uh, kate included don't seem to want to talk about the existential threat posed by I, I, transgender please. ideology on, hang on one moment, on women's spaces, uh, on the fact that there are boys and girls toilets in schools and girls don't have access to single sex facilities, on the basis that um, we are changing. I, this is what happens. Modern feminism, the biggest threat, the biggest threat to women in this country right now, women and girls in this country, is transgender ideology and the fact that we no longer uh, can define what a woman is without some silly caveat. And we've got men, so actually we might even now have women man-spreading or woman-spreading because they might need, <laughs> require this space apparently. And then we've got fe self-proclaimed feminists like Kate Smurthwaite um, who are too frightened to actually name this issue and talk about it. I think it's it's laughable that we can well, talk about Well, I think you just triggered her. I think you just triggered her, Kelly, to the point that she just did the, the laptop drop. You know, it's, it's the modern day equivalent of a marching out the studio, which is a shame. It's a shame. I want to have an open and free feminism. speech here. It's a shocking state of feminism. Look, at Standing for Women, we've come up with feminism, which centres females. The only qualification you have to have to be a feminist is to know what a woman is and know what a female, uh, female is and actually be one of those. Oh, Kate's That's back. That's it. Kate's back. So, Kate, you didn't storm off. 
thousand pounds. You didn't storm off, Kate. Uh, no, I, I, I have said millions and millions of times that I'm absolutely sick and tired of right wing news channels trying to stir up hatred between feminists and trans rights campaigners. Of course, there are minor areas in which people have differences of opinion, but this is an I attempt know. to divide. I haven't finished, Kelly, and I will speak until I have. This it is an area be. which is absolutely one of the things that is whipped up into a needless media frenzy. Every feminist I know is dedicated to issues like ending sexual violence, like protecting Men women's conditions and all of these things. And the fact that you would get on people to deliberately set that up. I've said before that if I am pushed into discussing this issue, I've said in advance that I don't think it's a suitable subject for a deliberately aggressive confrontational discussion like this. I haven't because... finished, Kelly, and you'll let me finish, Dan. Um, I have said before that... <laughs> well, it's actually my show, Kate, and we have two sides of the argument here, and I've got to get both in. And, Kate, this is a debate on mansplaining and manspreading and the appropriateness of that. I'm not going to censor one of my guests, but you might want to know, Kate, that later on in the show, I've got Caitlyn Jenner on, uh, probably the most famous trans woman in the world, uh, who will be talking about female sport. But I'm not going to censor what Kelly J has to say, just like I would never censor what you have to say. All researchers repeatedly, over and over again, that I think this issue is whipped up into an unnecessary and unreasonable debate by Men people... Men and women's faces is whipped up. Men and women's faces is whipped up. I haven't finished. Well, you're hate, talking for a very long time, and I, I can't man mansplain time to you, but Dan, if you, you talk all the time, me. then I can't speak. Well, no, you, no, you both have to speak, Kate. So, Kate, you make your point, your final point, and then I'll get Kelly to I make her final speak. point. But it's a two-way discussion, Kate. That's how this if works. You don't speak, I will make my point, and that's the end of it. Um, I, have, I have repeatedly said to your researchers that I believe that this issue, where, of course, there are minor differences of viewpoint has been whipped up by a handful of extremists who are taking a very extreme point on it. And shows like yours do this to undermine women's rights and to undermine LGBT rights. And overall, overwhelmingly, those sets of rights are actually in the same place and we're actually all campaigning for the same thing. And on big, broad issues, it's super important that we work together. And for that reason, I have always refused to participate in debates on that subject. I have made it very clear to your producers that if you do persist in asking me questions about that subject, my fee goes I didn't up. ask you one question about the subject. No. This is a debate about manspreading and mansplaining. But Kelly J, who is a feminist, brought up the issue. So, Kelly, final word to you. Well, I'm happy to say I left feminism uh, quite some time ago because a lot of the feminists, as clearly shown by Kate, Kate listen. Here, Kate, um, listen. Stop talking for a second, Kate. Right. Listen. Show some respect, yeah. Kate. Stop yeah. talking, I Kate. Think Listen. I think, oh, she's obviously gone. I think, you know, many women who call themselves feminists like Kate have been burned by talking about this issue and then they've been cancelled and they've lost work. And so I have great sympathy uh, with uh, some women like Kate who refuse to talk about it, but not that much sympathy because while she refuses to talk about it and she's talking about male violence, there have been men in women's prisons <laughs> raping women. So mm. I'm, I can't call myself a feminist in, in any good conscience whilst it still repeats this narrative. Minor conflict, men in women's spaces is not minor conflict. Uh, no. So feminism okay. is the future. Feminism okay. is not fit for purpose. OK, well, look, I wouldn't dream of trying to censor you, Kelly, just like I would not dream yeah. trying to censor Kate, who seemed to want to come on to GB News and have a censored discussion. That's not what we do here. Thank you so much, Kelly J. Keane, women's rights campaigner. So who